So welcome to the piano prize, lower six, piano and organ. So what we will do is we will listen to each other in here for the piano prize and then we will all go over and listen to James play in the chapel so that he has an audience as well. So because we're doing the prize in year groups this year, there will be a year group piano winner, which we don't normally have, and then there will be the overhaul first, second and third prize for the whole um, sixth form and fifth form, which will be announced later. So for you guys, the most important thing is remember to take a bow. You can play without masks. And um, our piano adjudicator today is Eva Doroskovska. She lives in London and she teaches at the Royal Academy of Music. She also performs regularly in festivals all over Europe. And she's particularly interested in contemporary music. So she works with contemporary composers like Goretzky and Pierre Norgard. So we're very happy to have her with us today. So we'll start straight away with Chris Porton. by um, Barry Tangreen. Um, it's not nostalgic, uh, and I always thought that was uh, about the terminals in maybe an airport, uh, nostalgic about nostalgic about maybe a past holiday. Um, I found it pretty similar to uh, Chopin's Waltz in B minor. Uh, it's got the same sort of bittersweet uh, character. playing Nocturne by Chopin, number 55, oh, opus 55, number one.
playing one zone number one based on a slow back folk tune by Bella Bartok.
Um, let's start with Christopher with the, with the Better Third Dream. Thank you so much for your introduction. You'd be surprised at how many events like these when I ask students if they've thought about the title of the piece they really haven't. And I think it's our starting point because we haven't got a hope in hell of bringing out the character if we don't, haven't thought about it. And I really appreciated that you gave us that introduction. It's clear that you obviously, and you'd even connected it, and I think you're right, of the she, she's, she's Slavic, so she's got the Slavic spirit. And in that, you can really hear that in, in the way she uses the, the rubato. And again, you know, your reference to the horse was spot on, I thought. Um, I love the fact that you captured the nostalgia of the piece. Again, that ties in with the, the feeling of a, a terminal, doesn't it? Our, our feeling of transit. And I think you have a really good solid tone. Just be aware of letting your, light, your left hand lighten up. Usually I say the opposite to people, and I'm always saying to everyone, listen to the bass. But I thought your left hand was a little bit over heavy on the third beat especially. So if you want that waltz to come across, you've got to remember that really a waltz is actually, it's a two-step really, because that third beat is very, very light. So just be aware of that. Um, more lift to your right hand would also just help the breathing come across to make that phrasing really, really breathe. Um, but at times I thought this, I mean, this was, it was really musically felt. There are places where I could just want more from your spontaneity. And by that, um, you did the odd thing near the end, which was beautiful, where you suddenly did a dip rather than a crescendo. You could do more of that exploratory work. Because it is, it's a very much like she's just sat down and just let it all come out. So you could do more with that, with the dynamics. And again, the rubato, it's got that feeling of just winding up and winding down. Be a little bit more surprised with it, yeah? Don't be too careful in your planning. Okay, Nikolai, um, he's not here, he's gone on. Um, so he'll have to struggle with reading my writing. Um, and then we have Thomas with the Beethoven. Yes, it's lovely to see that you had really felt that this was Beethoven. I could tell straight away it was Beethoven because you gave real attention to the accents and the contrast that Beethoven is so clear about. There's some nice knee ornamentation as well in your right hand. Just think about your rests in the music. Um, and that's mostly in your left hand. It's German music. And if you listen to the German language, the diction's always so clear. You hear the ends of the sound. Das, i, das, all of these kind of ends of the syllables. And in that sense, when you hear somebody play classically really well articulated and the release of the note, it can be quite a fast release. Don't, you know, don't think, oh, it's just a sort of vague ending somewhere here and there's a rest. Be really precise because it just gives a sort of clean rhythmic articulation to the playing. Um, be aware sometimes also of your balance. Yeah? And just thinking also structurally, you've got a place where you, your right hand goes into almost a sort of bridge passage towards the, before the return of the theme, the, the thematic material from the beginning. And you kind of drifted away, and I think it actually wants to go to that point. I put think climatically which looks really strange on the page, so you know now, reading my writing, what that meant. But as in, you sort of disappeared, and it wanted to go to that point, because we go to the furthest point, harmonically, and then we return. So make us feel that, and it gives a sense of structure to the overall piece. Um, and keep the tempo right to the end. I thought your chords at the end were lovely, they were really bold, and it gave a really good energy, but I, d I don't wind down too much, and then suddenly come back with that. Yeah, just keep that tempo solid. Um, some really good work here, though, and, and some really good understanding of the elements. It just needed a little bit more tidying up altogether. Um, and then we had Henry with the Henry's hit, yes, with the with the raindrop from memory. Well done. Such a hard piece to start this, um, and you have to think always with any instrument, not just the piano, but with how you connect to the silence that's gone before, and you're on an upbeat. So we want to almost hear the accompaniment in your head, internally, before you come in. So, you so then, it, then it carries on. But I just needed a little bit more space around that upbeat. And upbeats in general in Polish music, they're, they're constant throughout. They're very often, it's a, it's a sort of, it's a, a trait of, of Polish folk music. So it's so important to really use it. I thought you had a lovely lyricism for this. So it had a really nice sense of the bel canto, uh, bel canto, just think always about your long line. And when I was talking about lifting the hand with other people, in some times I wanted just, I can never do this by explaining, but just how we use our hands is so important for how we make the sound. So just when you've got a long line, keep the, the legato, if you do this, Sometimes that's really 
really what we want. But in this kind of sustained thing, we want exactly the opposite. So it's like being right at the bottom of the seabed, as it were, and just really keeping the legato in the keys, really in the bed of the, of the, of the keys. Um, so that was, that was organisation of the hands, which applies to everybody, it's just in different ways. You've always got to think about how we, we do that. I thought your C-sharp minor, your enharmonic chamber was beautifully judged, and I really like the way you built up your left hand accompaniment. But in that sense, be careful with that throbbing repeated note that you think about how you organise that. Because if you listen to a really fantastic conductor and they build a crescendo, they know where to build it in the orchestra. And if you've got an accompaniment, even though it's the same note, you can do so much more if you build it right from nothing and then you grade it. It felt like you were grading the chords beautifully, and that was fantastic, but you didn't think about how you were grading your accompaniment on top. So it's, and, and remembering then that it's still the accompaniment, as it were, so it has to be underneath, even though it's written on top, it has to be underneath those chords. It's very hard, it's, it's much more deceptively difficult, I think, that prelude than one realises, actually. Um, and lastly, I liked very much, you're clearly very mu thinking musically all the time, I loved what you did in your phrasing, but I wanted more projection of your tone in the chorale bit, just towards the, the return of the, that's the climax of the piece. And you've got such rich, thick chords. I mean, it very much goes back to Bach preludes and chorales, but if you can really think about how you're getting, you know, it's all that, it's awkward, those chords, and there's some really awkward stretches, and he puts a lot of the, the chromatic tension on the weaker fingers. So we have to work much harder as pianists just to really think about how that projects. So weights always to the top of the hand and right on the tip of the finger. Um, but some really musical and sensitive playing, so thank you very much. I thought you had real commitment throughout. Um, and then we had James with the Bartok. Um, lovely opening tone here, and I like the fact that you felt the changes of register across the piano and you graded the dynamics in the theme. Just be aware that actually that opening can do with less pedal. Don't be, don't be frightened to cover things up. You know, it's quite an innocent opening. And the da dee dee dum that's so typical of folk music, which was what Bartok was all in, really massively interested in. You know, he went around the whole of Romania and Bulgaria. He even had these funny, crazy tubes that he would record music on way before our time when we had invented um, recording devices. So he was fascinated by all of those Slavic elements and that folk music. So you have to make that come across in your articulation. And again, how you, you use your up and down in the hand will really help that. Um, I thought you had a real clear sense of the rhythm, but at times I wanted to hear the upbeats lighter to really contrast then against our downbeats and make much more of the humour. You know, those crush notes, it always reminds me of somebody being a little bit drunk at a party, being, you know, hiccuping, bum, 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 that kind of bassoon sound, so that you really exploit all the colour that's available to you. Um, and thinking as well sometimes with the phrasing, da 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 da, da 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 da, he does questions and answers all the time. It's that conversation that it reminds me very much of Fiddler in the Roof. You know, you get these kind of all these characters in this Slavonic village coming to life. You've got to characterise each one. And what you're doing at the moment is you're characterising a lot of them, but not quite thoroughly all of them. So if you can explore that even more, it'll be fantastic. Um, but I love the conviction and the exuberance you gave to your playing. So well done. And then finally we had James with the Schuberts. Such a difficult piece to start this. Again, it's thinking about how it connects from silence, isn't it? Um, and I think it's also about feeling the upbeat in the music so that you find really the, the lyricism in the, in the lilt of this. It comes from, Schubert always comes very much from dance music, from that Viennese kind of, those dances. Um, and that needs to come through sometimes. Um, it's not all about, you know, just the melody. We want to feel very clearly the pulse, so it's got a sort of gently undulating swing to it. Um, I love the fact that you're very still and calm when you play. It's fantastic. Um, and you really let your musicality come through. But at times I just wondered whether you could use much more uh, circular motion in your wrists because it would help you get to the top of the notes. And I mean, you're getting to the top of the notes, but what I mean by that is that you actually give more strength to the top of the hand. If we're here and we're playing, then our weight is really here. So it's about always transferring the weight within the hand. 
so that you can make that melodies sing out. And also listening with Schubert, there are so many amazing voicings within the texture. It's a dense texture. You have to do so much with colouring. And that's really where you can start now. You know everything that you're doing is fine, but what you can really do is explore. Oh, how about listening to the tenor voice? Or how about bringing this harmony out? Or this alto section here? Just gives it that much more depth and dimension overall. Um, so just those are things I'd like you to pick up on now. But otherwise, I thought it was a really sensitive performance. So just, you need to find that richness and the warmth of the tone, yeah? Brilliant. So, thank you very much, everybody. There's some really beautiful playing. Um, it was a really tough decision, but at the end, I, I gave it actually to Bishop Van Prelude. And let's hope that you don't bring out the rain today. Um, so congratulations, thank you very much. Right, I'll make this quick because I know we're getting behind. Um, James, I have to say, one of the most difficult things in the world to do uh, as an organist is to go up and play the voluntary, having done something else for the past hour and a half. And obviously, you have sung, played two different, completely different instruments, and then had to go and do that in a freezing cold chapel on an instrument that's obviously struggling with the temperature. Um, so, well done, just for even attempting it, quite frankly. Uh, it started well, uh, with a really nice arresting opening. Unfortunately, at the first registration change, at ya -da 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 it, it, the tempo slowed and it never really recovered. Um, and it really, that whole piece needs to drive all the way. It's the, the sixth of the set and it needs to feel like it's ending a big concert program when you've played all six of them. Um, and uh, just a couple of technical things to think about. Make sure hands, the notes come down together. Just really making sure that, you, you know, because you, we got a little bit of brum, brum, brum happening. Be careful that you don't lose track of your manuals when you're doing all that fun jumping. And, I mean, it's hard, that section, you know, but actually your manuals just kind of went to sleep whilst we, and your feet were surprisingly accurate, but we lost the tune, basically. Um, the other thing is, it, it was a little bit sloppier than I think you would be happy with as a musician. I, I don't know, the, the final augmented sixth chord was just wrong, and I don't know whether that's a misreading or a sloppiness, um, it was hard to tell there were a couple of places in the left hand in the major section, which the notes, you know, they made perfect sense, but they weren't what was on the page. So make sure you learn it carefully, especially a piece like that. You know, the thing is you can pull out the mixtures and everyone downstairs who doesn't know how to play the organ will be, oh, wow, that was impressive. And actually, um, it's dangerous when you've got an organist in the, in the congregation. Um, so be careful. <laughs> okay, but uh, lucky for you, you're the only person, so you get to win this one. <laughs>